Hiya! Seems like I've turned into a dancing monkey. Go, Jay! Make us another thing! No, I'm not a monkey. Monkeys are too intelligent and they're too, like, spry. I'm more like a trained seal begging for fish. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. That's fucking great. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Now, everything is set up almost the same way as last time. This is going to be a, let's say, a pre-cooling chamber. We're on Venus. Uh, we've pulled ourselves a nice vacuum, although there's still a trace amount of gas in here. That's uh, not super important at this point right now. We have an arc furnace behind a glass wall, and we have a vent there. Now, this is a little bit of a cheat, because if you pull a vacuum on an arc furnace and you never allow it to have any kind of atmosphere, it will give you zero degree gas. You don't need to cheat this. I'm going to show you how to not to do this without cheating. All you really need is um, cooler gas than outside. That's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm powering with an RTG, but you don't need to power with an RTG. This can all be powered normally. And you can get all this fairly early in the game. The only thing you can't get is the new advanced exchanger that I'm about to use. And the reason that I'm going to use that exchanger is because I don't want to sit here fucking forever waiting for things to balance out. So we got our condensation chamber here and our evaporation chamber over here. Now the problem is, is that there really is no gas that has the temperature profile uh, that we need to cool down the system, except for water. Steam will liquefy at 370 degrees Celsius at 600 kilopascals. Then we can put it into the evaporator side at zero degrees or close to zero degrees at uh, 6.3 kilopascals. Now we probably won't go that low and we probably won't need to go that low. Steam will condense into a liquid at 100 degrees Celsius at uh, 100 kilopascals or 200 kilopascals or whatever the hell it is. At, at, uh, Sea level, which is 101 kilopascals, it's 100 degrees Celsius. That's why it's metric. Everything starts at 100 with most plate. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So when you start off on Venus, you usually get some water. You're probably going to use some of it if you're human. Uh, you're probably going to use some oxygen too. Let's get this bubby over here. And we'll attach it to the platform, which is going to fill this up with some uh, liquid water. Now we're going to wait for those to equalize. I'm not exactly sure at what level they'll equalize, because this network isn't part of this network, so I'm not sure what the fractional level of uh, 140 liters is to 790 liters. It might be 6.76. Who the hell knows? But now that we got a little bit in there, we'll unseat it. There we go. And we'll grab it and just move it over here for now. And we'll get rid of this pedestal. And then we'll put on the new giant exchanger. I have actually not used these. I haven't even started this system up. We're starting this system dry. I'm going in as blind as you are. So we're going to want the condenser to be at 600 kilopascals, and we're going to want the evaporator at 100 kilopascals is fine. Let's go 150. Actually, let's just go to 100 because uh, we'd like it to go a little faster. And now I will spawn a nugget of iron. There we go. There's some iron right there. And we'll cheat a little bit. I'm going to look for uh, 43 nuggets of iron in the game file, so I can put that up to like a thousand or something, just so I don't have to keep feeding it. There you go, back in the game, and now we have a thousand ore here. And the ore I put in my hand is right, still right there. So let's stuff this in here. We'll turn this on, and we'll turn this on. And I accidentally forgot to turn the fan on, so let's make a little thing to turn the fan on. Okay, we made ourselves a little switch here uh, to be able to turn the fan on, and let's... Kick that on. There we go. And it is sucking, I think. So that has given us... Oh, at uh, 12 deg uh, 21 degrees Celsius. That's, that's pretty good. That's higher than I would expect it to be. And we're just going to shut the fan off for now, just so we don't have any cheaty temperatures. A simple way to get what a temperature is inside of a, an enclosed space like that is just to put some kind of vent in there. We know that that's off-gassing at 70 degrees Celsius. We can use that 70 degrees Celsius. We can suck everything out of there and we can use that level. This also might be broken in this particular update because this gas should be coming off at about 200 and some odd degrees Celsius, but we're getting it at, uh, under at sub 100 degrees 
don't count on that. Okay, so now that we've got some fluid, we'll turn this on. And gas is a fluid. So this is still extremely low, and it's going to make uh, demonstrating a high temperature hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck in some uh, atmosphere for, off of Venus uh, just so we can get some high temperatures. Because if I show it at like 150 degrees, this is, I mean, 50 degrees, this is not going to work. Okay, now we're sucking in some hot Venusian air. Uh, this may take a while because it's not a powered vent out there. I might hop outside and put a powered vent in a minute. But now we're just mixing the hot Venusian air with uh, our cast off from this arc furnace here. The arc furnace is giving us some iron nuggets. And this is reasonable. We're getting a thousand nuggets of iron ore is not unreasonable. And you can also set up a deep ore mine and get all of and get an amount out that you would be able to off gas. And again, our off gas is not that hot. We were at 32 degrees. Uh, now that we're pulling out from uh, Venus, it's getting a lot hard, a lot hotter. So we're gonna let this go up to oh, let's say 300 degrees. Let's get it up to 300 degrees, and then we'll go from there. We're at about 300 degrees now. We are not very high on the pressure. We only have about 400 kPa at this point. Let's turn this off. Now, you don't have to make this open to the room. I'm going to make it open to the room for fun, really. Well, now I know why I'm not wearing my earphones. I dropped them over here somewhere. <laughs> oh, he's going to hang! Oh, fucker, you're all the way over there! Everything's gonna be wireless nowadays. So they fall behind things and fucking disappear. Uh, now we've got ice forming out of there, but it won't be there for, for long. Let's close this up so it doesn't reverse leak. I don't think it does. Then we'll turn these on. There we go. And we can tweak the, va uh, the vapor pressure a bit so it won't go all the way down to zero. Although I think it... No, it's uh, hovering around one degree. And here's our outgas here. It's at 232 degrees. And it's still going down because we're not full of water in here. Uh, this should be at pumped up to 600 kilopascals, but it's not. So we're going to have some strange effects. Remember, this is not This is a game. This isn't real life. We're not going to actually see this thing work super properly. Okay, there we go. We've got the temperature to start rising just a little bit. We're now at 56, 52 degrees. That should stabilize at about 100 degrees. So it'll stabilize at about 113 degrees, thereabouts. It's not. It's being a doofus, but that's fine. It's stabilized to about 120 degrees out here. Let's pull a little bit of Venus air into this room. It's colder than I expected it to be. There. The room is now at 300 degrees, and our, t our waste tank here is at uh, 220. Our evaporation chamber is evaporating, and our condensation chamber is condensing. Now, unfortunately, we still don't have the proper pressure in our water line, so we're going to have to try to fix that with a prescient valve. Now we'll need to set this injector to uh, 6 megapascals. There we go. It's on, and we will sacrifice our jetpack, critical. jetpack tank. Okay, so we're at 585. I set it down just a little bit because I was uh, nervous that we might get towards a, a pipe popping event, but we can now see that it's staying a liquid in the pipe. That's good. And it's stabilized at 232 and it's going and it's raising just ever so slightly. So that should have stabilized the system. Let's shut this off. We'll remove this pipe to push as much gas as possible back in our cylinder. And we still have a little gas left in the cylinder. Temperature in the room is still lowering, so we're at 151 degrees Celsius. Once we're below 151, then we'll be able to have a second stage cooling uh, loop to use nitrous oxide to cool down whatever living space that we're in. Now again, I flooded the room just for fun, but we, you don't have to have it in the room. You could have it coming off of a storage unit here, and we can make these uh, these cables uh, smaller. Actually, let's do that now for fun. So I went ahead and did that. I put all of the, or I'm putting all of the gas that was in this room 
into this little structured tank here. And we're down to 144 degrees Celsius. Our waste tank over here is up to 235. And we can go up to uh, 3 something, 350, whatever the hell it was, before we start having problems. And we can also see here that our liquid tank, because of the changing temperature and probably a little bit of creep that's coming in, we are slowly leaking pressure into our system. So we're at 534 right now, and we can easily fix that by changing the type of injector we have. Well, technically it won't be an injector. Technically it'll be an ejector or a rejector. And we will set this to be, once we get a good purchase on the, the wheel, there we go, back to 558, and that will suck out the pipes. 580, I mean. Okay, there we go. Turn it back off. And we'll have a tiny bit of nitrogen in this pipe to push back down if we ever need it. But we probably won't because the temperature is only going to go up at this point. Now, at this point, I'm just taking the opportunity to allow the condenser to suck all of the gas out of the room. Because it can do that. It will attempt to bring it up to 6 megapascals, which is not up to now. And it'll drag all of that water vapor out of the air and you'll just be left with those three other gases and we'll i'll show you how to get them out in a second much like newlyweds on their wedding night we're just about sucked out here and there we go the uh condenser sucked the room clean we'll just clean up our pipes here then we can go to the machine make sure that all of the water is out of the system which it is then we can pull this switch and it will vent everything to the room there we go and we'll turn the evaporator back on and now this pipe network will only have water in it and this pipe network will only have uh, waste gas i don't know why i showed you that pipe network i just did and the groaning is coming from down here because it is very close to the burst pressure but we don't really care about that right now it is slowly sucking in the waste gas from this side. Unfortunately, we are also filling up this tank here. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. There. Now the compressor is back on. I've removed the tank that was over here. And now this loop will start filling up until that reaches 600 or 6,000 kilopascals, and then it will start condensing. If we had more water, this would be much easier. All we have is what we brought with us, or what we were given. There, and now it's starting to condense. We'll probably turn this down a bit so we don't have to have it so high. I haven't done any testing to make sure that the charts that they've given us in the wiki are actually correct. So it looks like that they may not be completely correct. Uh, we're at like 110 millipascals, 235 degrees Celsius, and we are handily con condensing right now so we have another 100 celsius we can tack on to that but it probably yeah it's a it's a it's a curve so it'll actually we can get up to 171 oh whatever we still don't have a lot of gas in this pipe here we'll turn this on we'll pull more gas out and that will also drop the temperature in here probably we're at 130, 139 degrees now, and we're continuing to evaporate, and the temperature is continuing to plummet. So let's disconnect the waste gas here. And put this back into the room. There we go. We're cooling the room down. Now we're just doing this to show that it's actually doing something effective. Because we have so little fluid in the system, this pipe is going to be empty most of the time because there's not a lot of mass moving around. So our off gas from our arc furnace is 62.8 degrees. We are processing iron right now. There is about a thousand nuggets in there. There's probably less than a thousand nuggets now. Again, it's not hard to get a thousand nuggets. They come in piles of 50 each, I think. And uh, they're everywhere on Venus. Very easy to find. There's lots of nuggets everywhere. And carbon dioxide will be very useful for uh, plants and so forth. 
but the minimum that we can get this room down to is 100 C. As soon as we start getting below 100 C, um, the evaporator will not be able to evaporate the water effectively and it won't cool down our, our loop here. And again, we're just using this loop, this uh, waste gas loop here, just to demonstrate that it will work. Normally what I would do is that I would take it off of this line here and then I would put it into another loop to cool down my base or a place that I was going to be walking around in or doing some kind of functionality in. But as you can see, it's pretty effective. Let's tweak this down just a little bit more. Let's go down to 50 kPa. The lower you have your evaporation pressure at, the less vigorous the cooling will be because you'll have less mass, but the cooler that you can make it. So it'll take a much longer time to get down to that level, but you'll still be able to get down to that level. So the evaporation temperature that we have in the tank right now is 140 degrees Celsius. And our room right now is 169, great number. Probably gonna move down to a stable temperature of 140 and then just sort of stay there. And the temperature in our waste tank is actually still going down because we're continuing to process iron here. Now, this may not last forever. Rocketworks could change the way that the arc furnace works in the future, and it'll let off a whole lot more heat. But at the moment, this is an effective way to cool down your, your base. It was effective uh, before, and I was using it. Okay, now we have a stacker. Let's shove all of this stuff in here. See how much ore we've processed. Just to show you, it's not a lot. So we have half a kilogram and 11 grams. That is extremely easy to process uh, normally in the game. And that's it. It's just like the last base that I showed you where we were cooling down using nitrous oxide. Right now we're just using water. Water is a fluid. Uh, so is helium and hydrogen and anything else like even a solid is a fluid gas or not gas glass is technically in a fluid state everything is a fluid solid items are just frozen fluids you can think of that really easily like water and th in the three states of matter we've all seen it as gas we've all seen it as liquid we've all seen it as as ice it is a fluid like anything else it's a fluid but once we get the amount of mass that we want in here or in a tank or wherever we were putting our stuff, then we can go to the nitrous oxide. The nitrous oxide can bring it down even further. And we can go even further once we get to zero degrees, close to zero degrees Celsius, because there are other gases that we can use to bring it down further. And the only trip up is the high temperature of the planet, 600 degrees. But that's not really a problem when we start mixing it with off gases from our arc furnace. Uh, the actual furnace, I don't think you'll be able to use it because it requires uh, much higher temperatures. So if we look at an iron ingot here, yes it does. So it needs 527 degrees uh, in the furnace for it to actually, you know, melt. Gold is less at 327, so you can use the, cat, the, uh, the off gas of gold to, uh, directly from the furnace to be able to put the, the pressure down. Be able, sorry, to be able to put temperature down. But that's it. I'm, it's this... There's not a lot I can say here. It works exactly the same way. It's just a different fluid. That's it. And I don't know how I'm going to I'm going to cut this up to uh, to a video because I've been recording for an hour. Most of that was in silence, uh, getting stuff prepared. But it is largely exactly the same. that in that's fucking great <laughs> i made myself laugh oh shut up <laughs>